Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are talking about Bevy. What is Bevy? Well, Bevy is probably the most popular Rust game engine out there. Technically more of a framework, but anyways, uh, this one is data-driven, uses an ECS system for organizing things in the world, and the reason why we're talking about today is because of this. Bevy 014 was just released. The 014 release actually has a ton of eye candy in it. So we're going to switch over to the demonstrations at this point in time, and then I will come back to this page later on, give you an idea of what is in this release, but instead, let's do some hands-on demonstrations. This is our first demonstration right here. This is screen space reflections. Right now, they are currently off. Now they are on. Uh, so this is a uh, graphically cheap way of doing reflections, as you can see in the water surface below. Now we can also switch over to the flight helmet and see the results right there. Uh, so they're off they're on. This one is, I gotta say, pretty self-explanatory in terms of what it does. Now we're gonna move on over to the next new demo, and that one requires a little bit more work uh, in that you have to build in the features for Meshlet. Now Meshlets, uh, you can think of this like Bevy's version of Nanite. If you have no idea what Nanite is, well, it's Unreal Engine's way of having uh, compile time or build time super high resolution meshes being converted down to uh, runtime versions. It's sort of like a super powered LOD system. Uh, here you can see um, multiple different, oops, wrong key, wrong key, multiple different resolution meshes. So what this is going to give them the ability to do is have super, super, super dense meshes and deal with them on a reasonable speed behavior. So it's, uh, again, it gives you the ability to work with really high, high resolution images. Your artist gives you super high stuff and then Meshlets turns it down into something more real time friendly. Next up, we have Cargo. By the way, this is how easy it is to run um, and build uh, Bevy, which is actually really kind of cool. But what we're going to look at is a volumetric fog next. Uh, so we now have this ability in here. Uh, you can see the results. You can see as you switch the light direction of it, like so. Uh, so if you want to have God rays in your world, you can now have uh, basically uh, volumetric fog causes the lights to interact with the fog. And this is the end result you get. Pretty self-explanatory from the example. I think it looks really cool, to be honest. So uh, yeah, that is that one. Uh, next up, we have a motion blur. This is a per object motion blur. I believe the demo is motion blur. By the way, if you want to do this yourself, basically just go on over to the GitHub repository, git clone it down, make sure that you have, um, you know, all of the, the tools installed. So the Rust compiler and cargo, uh, and then you're good to go. Uh, so here you can see, uh, this is per object uh, motion blur. So right now I can jack up the amount of motion blur. It is currently set at one. Uh, and we'll bring on down. So, okay. So let's change the blur quality and change the camera. So more blur. So you can see it more on the trees as they whip by. Okay, and then we'll go down to less blur. And then again, more blur, like so. And then we can also cycle the quality of the blur, which I, I imagine is going to have ramifications on the performance. Now, interestingly, that initial camera didn't really show it that well, but this one definitely does show it quite a bit better. So we'll do a lot of samples and maximum blur. And there you can see the results of it. Now you'll notice it's per object. So your car is not getting motion blur, but the wheels are, uh, and the trees, etc., in the foreground are. Uh, and here you can see again, those uh, ball bollards or whatever you'd call it, they're getting nice motion blur as we go. Again, we can minimize it, get it down if you want to get rid of it. So if you're looking for motion blur in your game, you have a ton more options available with that guy. Uh, next up, we have now uh, the color grading changes. So here we go. And this one is under... Uh, appropriately enough, color grading. Now what this has done is they've added in um, Filmic. So if you've ever used Blender's Filmic um, color grading system, uh, that has now been implemented here. Uh, you can change the exposure. Now the neat thing is about this new system is it's going to be um, available in real time. So you can make changes to it. So if I want, I can change the tint out like so, the temperature out like so, but your tone mapping now uh, is using the same filmic algorithm more or less that you see in the Blender um, application. So that's actually pretty cool. And again, all of these things are controllable uh, at runtime. Uh, I'm not actually sure what lift is, but uh, you're going to have a lot more control over your uh, your color toning details uh, as you work with this guy. Next up, we have another thing in a similar vein, and this is auto exposure. So this is basically an automatic way of reacting to how light changes, just like you would with a camera uh, where you point it into a light source, it blooms out, it changes a little bit. Here you can see the results. So right now, 
We switch over here, there's an image, you can see it correcting in, and we can do a compensation curve. So we can change, so the compensation curve is now enabled. And here, and you can do the toggle of the, the mask. So there's disabled. So you can see the results of it with the lighting change uh, and what you can work with. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, basically new automatic exposure adjustment for various different lighting situations. And then we have uh, animation graph. This is actually kind of cool. It's basically animation blending. Uh, it's something they've been working on for a couple of releases now, uh, but new demo here showcasing uh, how you can actually blend various different animations. So what you see here, uh, this Foxy character right here is set right now to do uh, run and then 100% uh, or sorry, 50% of walk and idle. So what we could do is turn idle down and you're gonna speed up a bit. We could turn walk down and then you're just gonna be full on running, though you're still gonna blend in here. The other thing is I can do, I can turn run down to basically nothing and then idle up automatically. So you see here the 50% blend and I can put a little bit of walk in or a lot of walk in, a little bit of idle. So if you wanna slow down or change your, basically blend your various different animation states, uh, this is capable of doing it now. And here again, we go back to a run with no idle and a bit of walk in there. You see the results there, a full run, and then idle and run if you wish. So that is, um, the new animation graph system. And then one last thing to showcase, and this is, there is more by the way, but uh, these are the, the extent of the hands-on demos for the new stuff. Uh, we got custom primitives available now. Uh, one of the big new things is that you can actually do extrusions. So see here, boom, we have an extruded shape out. One of the new options there, by the way, you can show the various different uh, bounding boxes available there. Um, so bounding cubes, bounding spheres, and of course, 2D, and 3D. So I uh, got new options when it comes to creating custom primitives. And that is it for the eye candy portion of this video. Now we head on back over to the blog. I'm not gonna go through all of this. I picked out some of the highlights, very graphical heavy this week because there's just a ton of new things in this update around graphics. Uh, but their TLDR version of what's here is your new virtual geometry. That is your meshlets, basically enabling efficient rendering of huge amounts of geometry. Think again, Unreal Engine Nanite. Uh, we've got uh, screen space reflections. We saw those uh, earlier on. Uh, and we've got depth of field, um, cause objects at specific depth to go out of focus, mimicking the behavior of physical lenses, per object motion blur, volumetric fog and lighting, uh, then filmic color grading, uh, anisotropy, uh, which the demo for that one, I didn't really understand, to be honest. The end result, I th think the demo might be bugged, that's why I'm not showing it to you, uh, but it changes the way that light interacts with the surface based off of roughness. Uh, then auto exposure, um, PCF for point lights, animation blending. And then we get into some of the things about like the actual coding. One of the big things about ECS is you end up spending a lot of times looping over tons and tons and tons and tons of systems. It's just the nature of the beast. ECSs are more or less a whole lot of for loops. Uh, now they have uh, some options there in terms of observers and hooks. So automatically respond to an arbitrary event such as a component addition and removal. Makes it so you don't have to loop through all those entities to make things work. Um, you got better colors, type safe colors makes it clear which color space you're operating in. Uh, computed state and substates modeling complex apps is a breeze with these type states extensions to our state abstraction and then rounded corners for the bevy ui uh, so again you can see a number of the different things so we got the new uh, nanite type solution here for super high density meshes um, the screen space reflections you can see on and off uh, and then we've got a couple more so here is your uh, volumetric very profound and obvious as we saw when we saw the demo for it ditto for motion blur uh, there's the color grading once again that we saw that in action. Now the one that's interesting, so there is now a bokeh depth of field. So you see the results of that there. So you see the blurring as you get further back is basically how depth of field works. So the foreground, you see literally almost nothing changes. Uh, background as you get further away, it blurs out. So that is an option that you can enable. Uh, and then this is the one, um, the anisotropic materials. When I run the demo, all it does is basically causes all the light to go away and just this line to be drawn. And I don't think that was the intention. Uh, so I didn't demo it, but you can see what it's showing you here is with uh, anisotropy, tropy, uh, it's um, instead of blue, like blending into a blob of light reflection, it's more of a precise surface. So it's um, it, it's a different way of rendering light. It's an option that is available. And then again, we got percentage closer filtering for point lights. I don't honestly, I don't see a single difference here. Uh, I, I've looked at this over and over and over again. Maybe it's just my old eyes. So this is why I didn't run the demo for this one. I honestly, I don't see 
a single difference between the two. And I don't know if there's like a bug in the presentation or the example or something, or this is like much, well, I can, I suppose there is one small difference is you get a very kind of blurred edge, I guess, on the, uh, some of the shadowing, but it's very, very minor. So you can see it right there as we circle over that guy. That's about it. Uh, and then, yeah. So uh, we also have um, subpixel morphological anti-aliasing. Again, not seeing a ton of difference between these two. Um, it's very it's very subtle if it's there at all. If you can see what it is, do let me know. I'm not seeing a lot of difference between the two comparisons. But yeah, there's a lot in this release. It's only been three or four months since the last, uh, the 013 release. So uh, this game engine is in, in, like really ex expanding at an incredible rate. So that's really impressive. I like uh, the Bevy engine. It's one I've definitely got my eyes on. I'm not a huge Rust user. I've never really taken the time to learn it and let it sink in and to get it. So I haven't really gone into much depth with this engine, but it's definitely still on my to-do list to do so. Uh, but that just means I'm going to have to get Rust too and... Rust is an easy language to bounce off of. And if you're curious about what's next up, so what you can expect in 15 and beyond, uh, better scenes, ECS relations, better audio, uh, uh, updates to the book, curve abstraction, better text, unified way on dev tools. So there is a stub now of Bevy Dev Tools, a place for tools that overlap for game development, etc. They will all be organized into that spot. Uh, the Bevy Remote Protocol, uh, so communicate directly with the running Bevy game uh, for debuggers, etc. And a modular maintainable render graph. That is what they are looking at in the future. There are also some uh, efforts to do, again, um, a uh, an editor or there's a lot of community works on creating, you know, like a Godot or Unity or Unreal Engine type world editing environment. That is definitely one of the things that people find lacking on Bevy. But again, lots of updates here. Let me know what you think of Bevy in general, Bevy 14 in release, in, in, in this particular release. Uh, and that's it. I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.